Hello guys, this is Mr. Slinky, and I am here today to bring to you a video of how to start a good city. I'm going to be here to show you how to not only get shallots in under an hour, but also get 500 points. Um, now 500 points isn't a lot in comparison to pretty much everyone else in the game. However, it is a substantial amount in under an hour to get with your, when you're just Bronze Age. Um, now starting off, this is assuming you've already gone through the tutorial. Um, I've already recorded this. Um, but as you'll be able to see, uh, with my forge point, uh, counter up at the top there, uh, I had bought a forge point and spent them all, and that is pretty much my hour timer to show you guys that I have done this in under an hour. Uh, those buildings that you see there will be put into an arrangement in which uh, you'll have a pretty good setup. Uh, right now I'm selling the obelisks because they are completely and utterly useless to you early on in the game. Um, so yeah, uh, pretty much I'm just finishing up the tutorial right here. I've already done the brink, the large amount of it. I'm just finishing it up here so that I can start with the normal missions. Uh, the missions are going to be randomized, and not everyone is going to have the exact same missions that I am that I'm going to have. So keep that in mind. The uh, the missions that I have are they just happen to have been very helpful. However, if you pretty much stick to the baseline of the missions, you'll be okay. Now there is one mission that everyone gets and that is to add someone any random person as a friend uh... and you get a five point forge a medium forge point package which is five forge points and you get i think two hundred gold uh... that comes towards the end of this video but uh... once you reach that that is what you're going to be using to get your shallots but this should help you this video should at least help guide you through what to do um, Right now I'm rearranging the city and I'm going to uh, sell all the roads because you're gonna end up placing more roads later and if you haven't figured out already roads are pretty much necessary for e every building except for decorations to even work as you can see with those uh, icons that are floating above all my buildings that aren't decorations it pretty much says no, we're not going to work for you, so turn turn us back on by putting roads. And it gets really angry at you, and that your citizens won't work for you until you have roads to them. Uh, I'm kind of OCD. That's why I'm putting the trees in the back and then the flowers in the front. Uh, some people might argue that that's tree racist. Um, uh, yeah, I'm putting the all my stone age things I'm singling them out because I'm actually gonna sell those pretty quickly uh... you'll notice within the fifteen minute mark I'm actually gonna have no stone age buildings left on my city because stone age is completely useless not only does it have the lowest output of every building in this game uh... huts excluded which I'll go I'll explain later um, but they take up a lot of space per output which I'll put a link in the description on what I mean by that um, so I've already sold the trees I'm replacing them with flowers uh, you actually don't want decorations but starting off you have to have decorations because you don't have any uh, cultural buildings cultural buildings are all you're gonna want to supply your citizens with happiness because of the aid feature now how the aid feature works is it pick it finds the uh, when someone aids your city it finds the uh, decorations first and then it finds the uh, cultural buildings now that's a bad thing for you because if you have you know 20 plus decorations in your city then it's gonna it's gonna polish all of your decorations first and it's not gonna have as much output as your cultural buildings would so uh, 
At the end of this tutorial, I will have built a stone circle, and that's the first uh, cultural building. And you're gonna want to, you're gonna build, uh, I think, two stone circles. I mean, I'm not going to on this video, but you're eventually going to want to build two uh, stone circles and then upgrade them to schools and then upgrade those to taverns. And then you'll keep those taverns until you unlock churches in the high middle age, or not churches, uh, marketplaces in the early middle age. Sorry. Um, you want to start producing as soon as possible, which is why I built that second pottery. Um, the hunters. They are only uh, th they are a three by three building, yet they only produce seven supplies for a five minute uh, production. However, the uh, potteries produce ten for a four by three, which is more efficient. Which I'll, again, that link will explain why. Um, the hunters. The reason why they are excluded from the efficiency thing is because they produce 7 every 5 minutes and the stilt houses only produce 13 every 15 minutes for the same amount of space. Now 7 times 3 for 15 minutes is 21, so the hunters technically produce 21 every 15 minutes while the stilt houses only produce 13. Unfortunately, if you're in a guild, any Stone Age building hurts your guild because they aid you and it will pick any random it'll pick the buildings at random going in order from decorations to cultural buildings to coin production uh and if you have stone age buildings such as your uh, hunters that I'm selling right now then that actually uh they'll th they'll get aided which hurts whoever aided you because it resets their blueprint uh chances uh, blueprints are used to make uh, to build uh, great buildings, and great buildings are very helpful to you. Um, they come in play later in the game, but uh, pretty much you don't want any Stone Age buildings, especially if you're in a guild, because it hurts your guild. Um, not to mention that their production rate is very low. Uh, right now, I'm actually about to sell my hunter because I need the population and it's just a waste of population for me so I can build another pottery uh, by the end of this tutorial I actually have four potteries I, the reason I'm not building the fourth one now is because there's I, I'm leading on a mission because this is a very I have a very high chance of getting a mission to build a fourth pottery uh, which gives me I think a little bit of gold I think 60 gold uh, which I want a fourth pottery anyway, so that's just free 60 gold for getting what I want. Uh, pretty much just going through the missions to get, uh, you know, some coin and supply. Uh, yeah, the, uh, missions help you greatly. If you don't do these missions, then you won't be able to get this done in under an hour, and you will have to wait for your own productions to supply you with the coin and supplies that you need. Uh, I, re I rely heavily on missions early on in the game. Later on in the game, the missions pretty much are just boosters to kind of help you along, but they just give you something to do. Early on in the game, it's, also, it's almost a necessity, if you're, especially if you're going to speed uh, you're gonna do a speed run like I'm doing right now. Um, I don't recommend using unattached troops for attack like I'm doing here. However, the stone thrower is useless to you, and those two spearmen are very easy to replace, so I don't really care about them right now. Uh, the stone thrower I'm just using so that I can uh, hit that um, that s slinger early on in the game early on in the battle which will give me an advantage and so I won't lose as many spear fighters um, some would argue that I would want I would want to use my stone thrower to hit the uh, the uh, whatever it's called that warrior up there first since spearmen have a disadvantage against them but since my spear fighters heavily outnumber him I'm not really worried about that uh, if there were like four Warriors, then I would use the stone thrower against him. 
instead of the uh, slinger. Uh, but pretty much I just wanted to get one free hit on the slinger so that my spearman could finish him off. But as you can see, I auto auto battled that and I only lost one uh, spearman, so I'm pretty satisfied with that. Um, yeah, you're gonna want to use pretty much through the entire Bronze Age. You can get by with just using two spearmen barracks. If you want to do what I usually do, and that's attack your entire hood every single day, then you can build, you know, more uh, spearmen, slingers, and warriors. Note, though, do not ever build horsemen, especially in the Bronze Age. Horsemen are weak, they're fast, which means they can get across the board easily, but the <laughs> spearmen can hit them and kill them in two hits. And the horsemen will only do, you know, one to two damage to the sp uh, spearmen. So horsemen are completely useless, they're a waste of space, and they're overly expensive. So don't get them. A lot of noob newbies to this game think that, oh, horsemen are great, let's build more horsemen. Well, then they get murdered and they get plundered every day, and then they go send complaint messages to people, as I'm speaking from personal experience from people sending me messages, uh, asking, pretty much begging them to quit plundering them every day, and I'll just send back, well, you should have better defenses. And, well, they should, so I have no sympathy for people that have horsemen barracks, so I'm just saying don't build them, save yourself a lot of trouble. And I'm rearranging my city right now. Uh, starting off, I usually put my uh, cultural buildings and happiness buildings uh, up in that corner where I'm moving my flowers to right there. Uh, but then when I expand out uh, two expansions to the uh, southwest there, then I'll move my cultural buildings over and I'll put my supply buildings there where the, my, my flowers are currently. Um... But yeah, that's pretty much a, it's a good space to have your cultural buildings right there, starting off. And then, if you're just gonna try to speed run it and not worry about uh, troops, just put your two barracks up there, next to my town, next to your town hall, like I have there. Uh, this gives you an expansion, but I'm not too worried about it right now since I'm still early on in the game. You don't have to worry about expanding until later, and it just costs extra supplies. Your gold, I meant, not supplies. Uh, yeah, so I have one battle down, and there's two left. I'm going to save this two for later, because they're going to help me get some coin, and it's going to be very badly needed later on. Um, and I'm just going to be collecting. You'll find that if you play this the way I do, coin actually is what you're most heavily in need of early on in the game. Later on in the game, coin becomes very, very abundant. Like on my uh, main world, I have over 2 million gold and only 100,000 supplies. So my ratio is way off, and that needs to fix, be fixed soon. So my mission, my military mission, was to, uh, uh, what is it called? Sabotage that sector, which means injure that. So there's that coin, that little bit of coin that I just spent. You get more supplies, which I don't need. Then you can go ahead and attack them with that extra spearman that you have. I think I lost my last unattached spearman in this battle. Which I'm not too worried about, because again, they're very easy to replace. And by the end of this video, I'll have a full eight spearmen to defend my city. That free stone thrower that you get do not use that to defend your city because spearmen easily destroy that and surprisingly so do horsemen uh... slingers are only good against or stone throwers are only against, good against slingers um... so I'm about halfway through with my uh, hour thing there yeah I just built about a forge point for the mission you're gonna use that forge point now to uh, unlock construction, to help unlock construction. Now what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to aid my entire neighborhood. 
Now only do this this one time. This pretty much gets on the friendly side of all your neighbors and it also draws attention to all your neighbors but I'm using it for a huge gold boost. I'm gonna pause the video here while I aid all 70 something people in my hood. So yeah, now I have everything uh, I have everything aided, or everyone in my hood aided, and as you can see up there, I have a substantially large amount of coin now. And now I'm going to use that to buy the last three forge points for my construction tech. And then I will have uh, stone circles unlocked. I'm going to dedicate this video to some guy in my guild named Overvenge because he seems very consistent on wanting to build obelisks and huts. So I'm going to dedicate this video to you. So now, uh, yeah, these jester quests, uh, they will make you very mad. Uh, they're, they're random rewards, which you'll see later on in the video, uh, rip you off. But at the same rate, you also want to do every single one of them because uh, oftentimes they'll give you diamonds. Uh, it's not very frequent, but on some occasions he'll, he will give you diamonds. Diamonds are those blue things up there in the upper right corner. They're pretty much special coins that you actually have to buy with real money, but every once in a while you'll get missions that give you diamonds. And they're, they're the only coin on this game that uh, transfer through other worlds. So I have 15 diamonds on this world. If I go to another world, I'll still have 15 diamonds. Uh, and so on and so on. Um, see now, as you can see, I have a full set of uh, spear fighters to defend my city. That's pretty much all you're going to need until you unlock soldiers or archers. Uh, when you get to the Iron Age, you're going to want to use archers and four archers and four ballistae to defend your city. That's pretty much the best defense that you can have. Um, the city setup that I have here with my roads like that is actually kind of new. Yeah, I'm <laughs> introducing myself to global. Uh, global chat saying that I'm a noob. It's kind of funny. <laughs> I'm gonna ask to join a guild now. Guilds are pretty much, they're a necessity to have in this game. Because trades without a guild cost a forge point, which become very valuable later in this game. <laughs> Asking for advice. That's lovely. Very lovely. I love playing as a noob on this. When I go to New Worlds, people will see my city. And it'll be like, oh, dude, you have a great city already. Don't change it. And every once in a while, I'll get some some know-it-all who comes on and is like, oh, you need to change this, this, and this about your city. And yeah, you're a complete and utter noob. He'll only have been playing like a month. <laughs> it's pretty great. Now I'm going to ask to join a guild. Guilds also help to uh, polish and motivate your... Uh, your buildings and what a polish or motivate does is it pretty much doubles the uh, output of whatever the v building is like as you have you as you've noticed probably my uh, my potteries give me 10 supplies every five minutes well if it's motivated it gives me uh, for whatever reason it gives me only 19 when motivated when it should be 20 or something there's some kind of thing with the math there. I don't understand, but whatever. But if you were to do the 15 minute one, that gives you 20, 25 every 15 minutes. But when motivated, it'll give you uh, 50. And your stilt houses give you 13 coin every 15 minutes. Motivated, it'll give you 26. Uh, my flowers give me 20 happiness. Polished, it'll give me 40 happiness. And so on and so on. Oh, and there, there's my first guild invite for this world. From a girl named Q? Question mark. 
I'm gonna go ahead and uh, accept that guild invite. I'm not gonna be playing much on this world, so I don't care which guild I joined. Let's see how good this guild is. This is an old world. It's a uh, world East Nagat. So I would expect everyone to be pretty large on this world. Already pretty advanced. Like I'd have to say, progressive era and up. Most of the longer players, older players on here. And we're getting pretty close to the hour. The hour finishment. 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 Uh, I'll have to add that word to my list of invented words. Yeah, now they're giving me a bunch of these really easy knockoff missions. Like, oh, get four Flagons. Oh, get three recruited soldiers. Pretty much things that you can do in less than five minutes. Uh, th I'm just really lucky on this. Uh, so your missions may take longer. Like, they may be like, oh, conquer two sectors of such and such province. But my computer is lagging really badly, as you may have noticed. So you might actually be able to get this done in like under half an hour or something. I'm doing good to get this done in under an hour with my computer's speed. And it's taking forever to load the guild menu. There we go. Oh, top guy has a hundred something thousand points. It's not bad. Uh, for an old world, I would have expected him to have more. But, you know, compared to 500 points, it's a lot better. <laughs> Obviously. Uh, I got a mission to build any two buildings. Roads, actually, surprisingly count. And these trails are free, so why not use them? Yeah, your architect loves to give you these build some kind of building missions. Uh, those are my favorite ones because they're really easy and they have some pretty quick rewards. And so, yep. Yeah, here's where this guy becomes a prick. Yeah, one coin. <laughs> Guy really knows how to piss you off. <laughs> He's being cheap right now with just 222 coins. But when you get to high middle age, it'll be like, oh, pay 20,000 coins. And then you only get one back. That's when he really makes you mad. There, there's the mission where you get the shallots. This is everyone gets this mission. The random reward can be anything from goods to coin to supplies. I think I get coin on this one, which is very helpful. Otherwise, I would have to aid my guild to get more coin. But uh, I'm just gonna friend that random person there, get the quest done. And now. The quest is done. I have a five point medium forge point package, which I'm going to use to unlock shallots. And shallots are pretty much, they are the best house that you can have in Bronze Age until you unlock cottages. The reason why is um, all the other houses, especially thatched, have low coin output for the space that they take up and low population. Um, stilts and roof tile houses are good on coin output. However, you have to stay active and you have to constantly collect them as you've been seeing me do with my stilt houses. Uh, this can be very tedious and you're not always on to collect them so you lose a lot of coin when you have these. With shallots, they are four hours each to collect and they have a large amount of coin output so you can easily get you know thirty thousand plus coins in a week 
and just stocking up on coins for the fu for future re uh, uses. Um, I always go for the high, the long collection uh, houses. Uh, so what I usually do is I buy shallots as soon as possible. And then I'll buy uh, cottages when I unlock them, and then I'll go straight to clapboard houses, which are eight hours, but they have more coin per uh, square per time. Like they give you more coins than a cottage would in four hours or in eight hours. Uh, those are early middle age buildings. Then high middle age will unlock townhomes, which give you something like I don't know 400, 500 coins every eight hours. I don't remember. And those are very useful. Uh, then in late middle age, you'll upgrade to apartment buildings and so on and so on. You want to skip all the one hour collection buildings. They just suck flat. They just flat out suck. 15, uh, 15 minute production buildings, you'll, you'll leave them behind after once you hit early middle age and you'll never see them again. Um, don't even bother with framed houses because framed houses literally give you as much coin as a roof tiled house it does in an hour it gives you exactly as much uh... brownstone houses don't bother with them they give you just a little bit more than framed houses do so yeah just just stick with the four and eight hour houses it's a lot better in the long run yeah, I'm pretty much telling that girl that invited me to the guild, say hi to YouTube, making a video for my YouTuber guys. So yeah, I've built my two shallots, which is all you're going to be able to afford early on, but you at least have shallots, and that'll, get, that'll put you over the 500 point thing. Hmm. It's weird. I'm I'm watching my video from a small screen as I'm narrating it. <laughs> all my words look caps locked. Yeah, I'm gonna set all these to four hour productions because I won't be back on this world for a little bit. Um, now that I've accomplished my goal, I'm gonna wait for my shallots to finish, which I think are like 15 minute, 10 minute, 15 minute buildings. Um click up there you can see your score and as you can see there five hundred you have over five hundred points you won't have the exactly exactly as much as me if you unless you follow exactly what I do but yeah you'll have at least over five hundred points you have your two shallots and as you can see from my forge point timer I've done this all in under an hour uh, so yeah, leave a like and subscribe. Niggas. Oh. Bitches. Oh. Oh. Grab your dick if you love hip hop. Rub your titties if you love big pop, but gotcha. Open off the words I say because. Now, who smoke more blunts than a little bit? What did you, an idiot? Listen to the lyrics I spit like M1s. Got mad guns up in the cabin. Cause these ain't the ones for the dipping and dabbing shit. I make it happen. You got your.